What if everything you see, touch and believe is just a version of reality and not reality itself? It's a question that sounds like science fiction, but philosophers and scientists have been grappling with it for centuries. What we call reality may just be a thin layer, a carefully constructed illusion built by our brains. The human mind doesn't perceive reality directly. It filters, interprets and fills in gaps. Our eyes see light, our ears detect vibration. But everything we experience is created from those signals inside our skull. We think we live in the world. But in truth, we live in a model of the world, a simulation inside our minds. This is not a metaphor, it's biology. Your brain never sees the outside. It lives in darkness. It receives electrical signals and assembles them into color, sound, taste and space. So what is real? Is the world out there the same as the world in here? Neuroscience says no. Our perception is shaped not only by senses, but by expectations, by memory, by belief. You don't see with your eyes, you see with your mind. And your mind is programmed, not just by biology, but by culture, language and experience. This means two people can look at the same thing and live completely different realities. Which one is real? Perhaps neither, or perhaps both. There's a theory in physics called the participatory universe. It suggests that reality is not fixed until it is observed. That observation itself helps shape what we call real. This isn't just philosophy. It's quantum mechanics. Particles behave like waves until someone looks. Then they snap into a position. As if the act of observing collapses potential into reality. So the universe at its core might not be a thing, it might be a process. A dance between consciousness and possibility. And that raises a deeper question. What if reality only exists because we're here to look at it? If reality depends on observation, then what role does consciousness truly play? Are we just passive receivers of the universe or active participants in creating it? Some physicists believe the universe might be fundamentally mental. That matter is not the base of existence, but mind is. The famous physicist Max Planck once said, I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. In this view, the brain is not just a machine that generates awareness. It's a receiver, a tuner, like a radio picking up frequencies that already exist beyond the physical. That idea may sound mystical, but it's echoed in quantum physics, information theory, and Eastern philosophy. And then comes the simulation hypothesis, the idea that what we call reality might be a highly advanced simulation. It's not just science fiction anymore. Serious thinkers like Nick Bostrom and even Elon Musk have explored the logic behind it. The idea is simple. If it's possible to simulate consciousness and civilizations survive long enough, it's likely that simulations vastly outnumber biological realities. And if that's the case, statistically, we're probably inside one. But simulation doesn't mean fake. It means structured, programmed, intelligent. Just like a video game is made of code, yet feels real to the player, our universe may be made of something deeper than atoms, information. Space, time, even the laws of physics could be emergent, rules inside a grand system. And what we call glitches, deja vu, strange synchronicities, impossible coincidences, might not be imagination. They might be hints, clues that the system has seams, that the curtain is not fully closed. But here's the twist. If the simulation is advanced enough, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. To you, it would be reality. If we can't tell the difference between simulation and reality, then what defines what's real? Is it sensation, emotion, memory, or is it simply what we choose to believe? The truth is, your mind constructs your reality moment by moment. And what you call you is part of that construction. You are not just a person experiencing the world. You are the world experiencing itself through your eyes. When ancient mystics said the world is illusion, they didn't mean it was fake. They meant it was flexible fluid, dependent on perception. Science is now catching up with that idea. The line between physics and philosophy is fading. Maybe that's not an accident. 
Maybe reality itself was never meant to be a fixed thing. Maybe it was always a question. And the more we search for answers, the more the question expands. Because reality is not something out there waiting to be found. Reality is something you meet halfway, something you shape just by being aware of it. And in that awareness lies the mystery, not of what the universe is, but of who you are within it. They say the deeper you look into reality, the more it starts looking back. And maybe, just maybe, the moment you stop trying to define reality is the moment you begin to see it. Throughout history, reality has always been shaped by the limits of perception. And every time those limits expanded, what we called real had to be rewritten. When Galileo turned his telescope to the sky, he didn't just see stars, he shattered the center of the universe. When Einstein wrote his equations, time and space became curves, not constants. And now, as quantum physics, consciousness studies, and digital theory begin to overlap, we find ourselves on the edge of another revelation. One that doesn't just redefine reality, but redefines us as the ones shaping it. What if the world you see is just the surface of something else? What if every moment hides a layer you're not meant to notice? What if the rules you follow were written by minds just like yours? What if time isn't passing, just looping, repeating, folding in? What if your thoughts shape more than your choices? What if they shape the world? What if you're not inside reality, but reality is inside you? What if the biggest illusion is thinking it isn't one, 